guys. Um, the reason I haven't been on here for a while is because there was one in particular. Because that's what I always look at is the victims. But I debated on doing this one. Now, I've done the one about Dean Coyle, the Candyman, uh, ones involving torture and everything else. But this in here is big time viewer discretion is advised because you're going to hear some things on here, especially a young girl scream that they won't release the entire tape to the public because they keep it for FBI trainees. So they can let them hear what real evil sounds like. I actually got just a few seconds of it. If you don't want to hear it, I'll tell you, and, you know, uh, just go ahead and, you know, don't watch this. It's, the killers was called the Toolbox Killers. It was Lawrence Bittaker and Roy Nelson. Well, they'd killed five young women from the span of June 24th to October, actually on Halloween 1979. All right, they'd, now Bittaker had an IQ of 138. But, uh, no, nope. that it's, but anyway, Bittaker, Bittaker was the most disturbing individual that John Douglas, the guy from the FBI that does these profiles, started this profile killing stuff for the FBI, he said that was the most disturbing man he ever met in his life. Uh, Bittaker... In and out of jail, finally went to jail like uh, this last Roy Norris got to be acquaintance. Now, Bittaker up to this point hadn't done raping and all that stuff. He had just been violent. And as a matter of fact, he was in there this time for stabbing, I think it was a cashier or a clerk or something for stealing food. Now, Roy Norris, on the other hand, that's all he had been in prison for was molestation and raping. Well, they got to be friends. And they got together. These two men agreed while they was in prison and planned this out and fantasized this. They said if they ever got out, they would get back together and they would rape or sexually assault. Each girl, every girl from the age of 13 to 19. Bittaker gets Norris to uh, buy this fan right here. A GMC. That's a, a blue one. And then they have it all decked out. Let's just say. To their liking. And finally. They come to their. They come to their first victim. And well. Norris and Binnaker both. See here. It's a 16 year old girl. Named Lucinda Lynn Schaefer. On June 24, 1979. The last time anybody had seen her, she was leaving Presbyterian Church meeting in Rodeo, in Rodeo Beach. Hours, a jogger got to this spot where she discovered the nude, lacerated body of a teenage female. This discovery would lead to the arrest and investigation of two ex-convicts for her murder and the murder of four other young girls. Of course, the only body we had in this case that was found right off the bat was Lynette Ledford because Bittaker wanted to see the reaction of the uh, of the press. While serving time in prison, Norris and Bittaker came up with the idea of murdering and raping young girls, one for each year, ranging from 12 to 18. 
Lauren Sigmund Bittaker was a 39-year-old parolee who had been released from the California Men's Colony at San Luis Obispo in November of 1978. He had served less than four years after pleading guilty to the lesser charge of assault with a deadly weapon after stabbing a supermarket employee. And see, Norris turned himself in once the heat got on him after they'd killed the five girls. So he agreed to rat on Bittaker so he wouldn't get the death penalty. So this is coming from Norris. Norris sees her and said they had a mattress in that van and everything. They try every way in the world to get the Cinda in there. She won't go. So finally, around 7.46 that evening, Schaefer's walking alongside and, uh, hey, look at, you know, I'm gonna get her. So what they done is they grabbed her, drug her into the van, Norris did. She kicked and fought for a while, but he bound her and they drove off the San, San Gabriel Mountains where nobody would bother them. Here's what is messed up, guys. At first, Lucinda was screaming. Now, this is by Norris's account. <laughs> then Norris stated, just as calm as he could be, he said, Lucinda all of a sudden maintained a, magnif a, a magnificent state of self-control. She knew it was over. She didn't even cry. Well, we didn't find anything as far as Cindy was concerned. We went down with uh, members of the Sierra Madre search and rescue team. And Didn't even give no great concern. Well, when Norris and Benneker took their pleasures out on her, uh, why Benneker, see, one would walk off while the other would, uh, you know. Well, while Benneker was gone, Schaefer asked, Norris said, are you going to kill me? Norris tells her no. She said, if you do, will you please give me just a few seconds to get right to the Lord? They deny her that request. And uh, they killed her and throwed her over the bank. The second victim, Andrea Joy, Joy Hall. On July 8, 1979, two weeks after Schaefer was murdered, I was hitchhiking along the Pacific, Co uh, Pacific Coast Highway where Benneker and Norris noticed her. Well, they tried to give her a lift and it didn't work out too good because another car pulled up and she jumped in the car with them. Well, Benneker and them followed her, followed the car. Until they watched Hall get out in Dondo Beach. At this time... Norris was hiding in the van again, in the back of the van, making her believe that Bittaker was the only one in there. And once he got Andrea in the car, and uh, I think he offered her a drink or whatever, Norris pounced. She put up, uh, she put up a fight, but they sexually assaulted her multiple, multiple times. She begged not to die. What happened was they took her up in the same, the, the same spot. And uh, Norris got scared to drive down because he seen a car. He thought he seen a car coming. So he goes to drive down. And Bittaker takes uh, takes Hall out there. And I reckon asked her give him a, just a reason why he shouldn't kill her. And... Uh, Evidently, her begging for her life wasn't good enough, so Benneker stabbed, stabbed her in the ear, both of them, with ice picks. Yeah. The third and fourth victim, Jackie Doris. Gilliam, 15, and Jacqueline Lee Lamb, 13. 
On September 3rd, 1979, the two were sitting at Hermosa Beach, waiting on a bus to take them to another part of the beach, I'm assuming. Ben Bittaker and Norris noticed them, and they both noticed Gilliam, the 15-year-old, Haria. They really weren't interested in Lamp. Well, they got their, I guess Norris got their trust. They knowed something was wrong right after they got in the van and they seen Benneker was going the wrong way. Well, what happens is, is Lee starts putting up a, uh, or Lamp starts putting up a fight, a pretty good one. Well, Norris hits her in the head with a sack of weights, knocking her unconscious. While this is going on, Gilliam jumps out, I do believe, and uh, Bideker stops the car, jumps out, and hits her. You can see in this picture, guys, this picture right here, this young girl, 15 years old, Having God knows what done to her. You can see the side of her face bruised. Her eye black. Posing. Heading up Glendora Mountain Road. Finally, Bitteker and Norris came to this large shade tree. Bitteker backed up the van as far as he could in an attempt to get out of the hot sun. Here he would rape Jackie for the next two and a half hours while Norris photographed him with a Polaroid camera. Jackie had, had a black eye and a swollen uh, side of the face where uh, Bittaker uh, had hit her. He slapped her hard enough to leave a red impression on the side of her face. He told her that that was kind of to give her an idea of what would happen if he caught her in a lie. At that point, she said she wasn't 13, but 15. Bittaker said to her, well, I can see that you're in you're in pain when I'm uh, doing this, and uh, you know, f feel free to express your uh, uh, your agony. And she said, "Well, you, you told me that I was supposed to act like I was enjoying it." And he said, "Oh no, that's okay. You know, scream your head off." So Norris, they literally they did not do nothing to Lamp as far as sexually assault her. They did kill her, or Bittaker killed her anyway, but uh, he told her that she would die a virgin. But Jackie Gilliam, Norris said that he didn't want neither one of them to die, but he definitely didn't want Jackie. And Bittaker wouldn't have it. He said they only die once. So he stuck her in the ear with a ice pick, I presume doctor next to me and there was a trail of bones he would say okay that's a femur here is a arm bone and there was a skull uh missing the lower jaw but had the upper teeth that turned out to be uh leah lamp and we identified that from dental records then we found another skull. It was missing all teeth, but it had an ice pick uh, embedded uh, in it um, through where the ear canal uh, would be. I figured after the mountain searches that we really weren't gonna find anything more because we were having torrential rains. Part of Glendora Mountain Road had even been washed out there is no way that if we had come up a week later that we would have ever found the remains of Jackie and Leah because they just would have been washed away. After that, at the end of February, I filed all the, the murder charges. Shirley Lynette Ledford, 16 years old. Benneker didn't like her because I think she befriended him or he thought befriended him i think she knew he was a freak and did try to stay away from him because she was a waitress or something if I, i'm not i ain't for sure on that part on halloween they uh they get her and she got it the worst while norris was driving bitteker turned on a tape recorder 
And this is what pure evil sounds like. You can hear Binnaker hitting Ledford. You guys will get to hear that. Uh, smacking her. So what he fight in in the screaming ain't just over him hitting. The agonizing screams of teenager Lynette Ledford as she was being tortured in a moving van. The accused, Lawrence Bitteker, showed no emotion as he listened, his eyes fixed on a transcript of the tape. The jurors concentrated on the transcript as if to try and block out the screams. It was too much for one member who wept. <laughs> a spectator rushed from the courtroom. It was more than she could stand. KNBC artist Elizabeth Williams also had to leave briefly, too overwhelmed to keep sketching. The tape recording lasted 11 minutes. Then Superior Court Judge Thomas Fredericks called a recess. Some spectators had waited days to hear the tape over defense objections. Now, those spectators wish they had I've heard things before. I didn't, I didn't, I thought I'd be able to sit and listen, but I've never heard anything like that in my life. Uh, I, I have a daughter and I just... I just could see her, and I just, I just couldn't take it. And you've heard it obviously several times before. It still seems to affect you, obviously, quite deeply. the tape would give them some idea of what hell is like. He was right. From the county courthouse in Torrance, Joe Ramirez, New Center 4. They didn't get the name <laughs> Toolbox Killers for nothing. Took his pair of pliers and uh, let's just say he was uh, tearing her insides up. Both sides. I don't even, well, then it was Norris's turn. Norris couldn't do anything with her because she was tore up. So, he decides to take a sledgehammer and hit her in her elbow 25 times. Now, Norris is the one that has to kill her because Benneker said he hadn't got his hands dirty. So he took a clothes hanger and tied it, twisted it around her neck and dumped her out. This time, literally along the side of the parking lot where just so they get shock value. Guys, when they pulled that clothes hanger from around Shirley Ledford's neck, The, the noose part of it was the size of a silver dollar. That's what I have. Um, they was both convicted. Norris got life without parole. He died in 2003. Um, Bittaker got life. Sentence was never carried out. Man died, lived to be an old man. God bless and uh, be careful out there.